Hi Stampers, it's Kathy Hamrick again with Country Road Stampers. Today I want to show you a cute little treat since we're coming up on Easter. I know it's still a ways away as I'm making this video, but it's also spring or soon to be spring. So I thought this cute little guy would be really easy to make and I'm going to show you something different about this Best Bunny set. So sit back and I'll show you how to do this. First thing I want to tell you is about this Best Bunny. It's a really cute set and it's not just like I think Easter. There's birthdays like the magic hat. There's a lot of fun things you could do with this so you don't limit yourself to just thinking up. Oh, that's just something I got to use for one season and that's it. You can also use this for even baby greetings to make something cute. And you remember just a few weeks ago I showed you how to take images that have coordinating punches and how you can line it up and then you can put those on your photo polymer blocks and then they'll line up. Well guess what? That does not work on this punch. If you line it up, put it on a clear block and stamp it, it is the reversed image. So it does not work with this one. So I was very frustrated this morning because I thought if I was going to make a lot of these then that would be a nuisance because I just have to keep struggling with that image and trying to get it to work and it would just be very frustrating so I decided I had to find something to do so I'm going to show you what to do if when you put this on it does not match up for your punch I was going to show you that it doesn't match up but I didn't bring a clear block to put that on to make it I shouldn't do this let me grab a clear block Sorry, I hate dead air, but that is what it is. You just need to see that it really does not work. So I've got this off. And I'm going to ink it up with my Memento ink that's sitting here. And stamp. And you can see, ears are going this way. It's the complete reverse image. Now I can make the body work, but not the head. So we'll get that changed up so it does work. So we're going to bring in the Stamparatus. Now I went ahead and punched out the image. I'm just standard punching it. This is about a 3x3 three three piece of cardstock. I don't know that that makes a whole lot of difference, but just so you know that, make sure everything is squared up good. I'm going to put my magnet here so it doesn't go anywhere. Then I'm going to take those same images that I tried putting on the punch and I'm going to put them right down hopefully my head's not getting in the way and match those up it makes me kind of nervous when I do this because I'll be hurrying and I'll probably not get it right squared so it will not work as well so remember you want the stamp the part you stamp with goes down just like you were placing this in the stamp apparatus anyway and I usually keep something here closed so I can move this around because these photopolymers are really sticky and they want to stick to your finger. So hopefully I've got that. It's hard to get above it and look really well. Ah, that wants to stay on my fingers. There we go. Okay, we're going to cross our fingers. I do have a good one, so if I don't have it matched up quite right, it'll be okay. So now we're going to pull this out of the way and just put another piece of cardstock in there, three by three. So now because we punched this image, we have already reversed it. Ordinarily I thought I was going to have to stamp on my silicone gel mat and reverse the image, but I don't have to because just the act of punching it has reversed our image. So we're going to ink this little guy up, stamp him, Oop, didn't get right there on his little chin. See, I've smeared ink on there too. Whew, made a mess. There we go. So now our piece matches our punch. And it just lines up nicely. Yay, and it works. Okay. So we're going to punch that out. I'm going to lay that aside for just a minute. My little bunny pieces. My head, the body. We're just going to lay him aside for a second. Now it also punches out little hands. And I use these little hands, but I'm going to tell you, these little hands, I think, just look a little strange. So I'm not using those a whole lot, just so you know. 
Okay, so here again is what we're going with. So you're going to take a piece of designer series paper. I chose the one that is with how sweet it is. There's plenty of others you could choose. And it's six inches by two inches. Then you're going to score that at two and three eighths and three and five eighths. So that kind of makes your little holder again like this. Then we're taking this scalloped tag topper and we're just going to slide that right in there so I can see it coming up the back here and square it up really good. Punch. Done. Then we're going to do the other end. Whoops. Maybe we are. Same thing. Line it up. Punch it. Off camera we'll punch it. <laughs> Get that stuff out of the way. So now we got your cute little topper already. Now you can put whatever candy you had that fits. I actually had Easter eggs left over from last year. Yes, I have stashes of candy in here that I use for things, but we never eat them. So there is that all done. Now you can use whatever kind of ribbon you want to tie this off. Um, I actually use twine on this, and that's what I'll use again. But let's bring back the bunny and do our bunny. So I'm going to use a white one on here, and I'm just going to give him a little bit of lift by using a dimensional. And just put that behind him and stick his body right on here, like so. In case you hear a fan going in the back, back, back ground, my husband's on the phone in the other room and I didn't want you to keep hearing him, so I put the fan on as a background noise, so I hope it's not really annoying. Oh, I almost forgot to stamp his face. And I don't know how this will work since I already put, oh, no problem, I have a second one here. We'll just use this other head so I don't goof up his face. Like someone's knocking at the door. And we're going to stamp this several little faces to choose from. Some of these little faces look kind of cheesy or strange. <laughs> so I chose the one I thought looked the best. Now you could go ahead and color in the ears and all if you want. I am just in the interest of time getting this put together and done. And you'll see I'm going to leave the hands off of this one. You see what I mean? I just think they look kind of weird. And maybe they went the other way, but the other way didn't look any more normal. I just thought, see, I just thought they looked kind of strange. Okay, then I've added a tail. And you can see right here, maybe it's a flower, maybe it's a tail. But we're using it as a cottontail. And I didn't stamp it this time because I just thought it would be nice just to have the white little puffy tail sticking out. So I'm just going to put a little dimensional on it and put it right in behind the little rabbit. So where it looks like it's about where a tail would be poking out from behind him, like so. Then I've already taken some grass and I've cut a piece that was two inches by about a half an inch. And then I've just taken my scissors and just kind of made it look like grass, very uneven grass. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue right in the center. I have dimensionals on the end, but I don't want dimensionals in the center because then that makes it raised too much. So I'll just take those little dimensionals off the end because where he is, I don't need any dimension added. So there's a dimension at one end, a dimension at the other, and then with a little bit of glue, and then you can kind of fluff your grass. Okay? Our tail still shows. Then I thought I would add the little carrot just because if a rabbit's there, there's probably carrots where he's eating. So I stamped and fussy cut that out already. So that would be done. And I'm just going to pop a little dimensional, mini dimensional behind that, and put him right in here with this little rabbit. So there we go. And then you can take your piece of twine. This would obviously work better if I had candy in there that gave it some weight. And then I just made a loop and pulled it through because those that know me know I hate to make any kind of bows. I just hate doing them. And, but this works just fine. Cut that off because I certainly got more than enough. If you want to make sure it stays secure, then you can just tie a knot in it also makes it nice and easy just to slide that off. 
you can fray it out. I frayed the other one out a little bit, but I'm just going to cut it down like so. So there we go. You could add a greeting if you wanted. I think these are really cute. And with the Stamparatus trick, you could stamp a bunch of these in a very short amount of time. Okay, so give that a try using a Best Bunny. See what you can come up with. Thanks for stopping. We'll see you again. Bye.